Is this World War III, to spoiler it in advance, probably not, or at least not yet. For the first time in history, Iran has directly struck Israel with a barrage of over 300 drones, missiles and cruise missiles. This was the expected reaction to an Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, in which on the April 1st, two generals were killed, seven high-ranking members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Um, we'll talk in this video, we'll talk about what actually happened in this attack, what does it mean, and how will Israel react to that unprecedented attack. So what has happened? 170 drones, 120 ballistic missiles and 30 cruise missiles were shot towards Israel from Iranian or mostly Iranian soil. Seven hits were achieved in Israel and Israel said that they shot down 99% uh, that Israel and its allies shot down 99% of the attacking munitions. In fact, obviously, if we calculate seven hits and barely over 300, we are a little less than 98% that were intercepted. Still, though, an insane amount of munitions that were intercepted on the way. Next to Israel, the uh, defense was aided by the United Kingdom, by the United States of America, by France and by Jordan, and likely also with Saudi Arabia, even though I have not seen a solid confirmation of this yes, yet. This was possible because the intelligence knew before intelligence agencies knew before when the attack is going to happen and likely even knew which targets were hit. There are some rumors that Iran might have actually told the US that they are going to strike and what they are going to strike to make sure that they themselves will not be hit in a retaliatory strike by the US as the US might think that US bases have been attacked. The, um, the victims on the ground, some, some people suffered. A girl was hit with shrapnel and is supposedly fighting for her life. So one heavily wounded victim in Israel, 25 persons are lightly wounded, slightly wounded. So overall, at least at the time of recording, not a single dead, not a single dead victim of this attack. Iran was, while the waves were still in the air, declaring that this is done regarding their own concern that basically they did their they exacted their revenge that they needed to do if israel now stays quiet this will be it there will no be will not be further uh, fighting from their side they also claimed later that they managed to destroy an air force base while iran actually hit a air force base an israeli air force base in the south the hits from what we can see on, on satellite pictures, as well as the videos the Israelis themselves published, the damage was slight, even though at another base, a C-130 was damaged through those attacks. Um, still though, the fact that they hit Air Force bases allows Iran to claim victory, basically that they destroyed the Air Force base from which the fighters, the fighter bombers were started that conducted the strike on the Iranian consulate. Iran. Iran faced the uh, dire need to react, to continue being taken serious in the Middle East after one of its consulates has been struck and one of its top generals was killed in this attack. The, still though, they also struck despite explicit US warnings, despite the US saying directly, do not attack Israel, do not do it. They still did it, showing that they will not be deterred by US, uh, by US threats, also adding to their own credibility. Still though, they said, should Israel strike back, they will strike much, much harder than they already did. And regarding their missile inventory, this is not an empty threat. They were able to strike much harder than they actually did. Right now, allies of Israel, including the G7, are putting pressure on Israel not to strike back as they want to prevent an escalation that would obviously turn uh, the oil markets crazy if the Strait of Hormuz is being closed after an extended war there. And the US have said they will not support Israel in a strike to um, in a strike should Israel strike back Iran. Right now, 
um, we have a situation where Iran did a strike which did not do any too serious damage. Um, they seem to clearly have measured the strike that they will likely have a chance of doing damage, but that doesn't necessitate a direct response from Iraq, from Israel, basically allowing both sides a, a way out of a spiral to prevent a wider war. Hezbollah, for instance, has struck Israel during that attack, but they used Grad artillery rockets against a military installation. They did not use their, their huge arsenal to strike targets all over Israel, which could have been a perfect opportunity to coordinate both strikes. This shows that uh, Iran, despite everything, has shown restraints. Still though, Israel right now, at least according to commenters in Israel will have to strike back. They will have no choice as this was the biggest rocket barrage since World War II, a strike that has not been done anything at any time before. The individual strike was bigger than any individual strike by Russia against uh, Ukraine in the past years. Over 300 cruise missiles, drones, suicide drones, and ballistic missiles were fired. And uh, so this has to be understood that this was not a warning shot by Iran. This was a serious attempt to do damage, even though Iran didn't go all in. But it will likely, at least according to Israeli voices, force Israel to react, to show the world and its adversaries that this can't be done with Israel without repercussions. This is at least what we hear. The fact, though, remains that only one heavily wounded person allows Israel a lot of flexibility in how they would have to react. If it had cost them another thousand lives, like the terrorist attack on October 7th, Israel would have been forced to strike back with unprecedented strength. This now allows them some flexibility. Generally, um, if they decide that they need to strike back, but a minor target, they could strike a, another uh, installation of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard core or in the um, of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps in Syria, this would allow them to strike Iranian targets directly without striking into Iran and thus allow it to die down somewhat afterwards. On the other hand, um, if if um, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, takes the chance uh, this can escalate much, much wider. Right now, according to the the polls, he would be voted out of office if there is a new election. While the war keeps going, there will not be a fresh election, and this allows him to remain in power. And Benjamin Netanyahu tries for over a decade, probably, to end Iran's nuclear program. This might now give him the chance to finally go the step and try it out. Obviously, Israel will be now uh, there, there are attempts, attempts to restrain Israel to make sure that it doesn't go all in with the threat from the US that they won't aid, with G7 asking them to stop it. Se several G7 members act actively helped Israel prevent this attack, having their own fighter jets, their own missile defense in the air, shooting down targets flying towards Israel. Should Israel lose that support, obviously, this will probably not be worth the price for the Israeli government. So we will have to see how they react. Another option is cyber attacks, and this actually seems to be a very likely option as cyber attacks. Israel has one of the most powerful cyber attack uh, capabilities in the world and this can do tremendous damage without forcing the Iranian government to directly react. For instance, if we can imagine they take the control over power plants and let them destroy themselves by manipulating the data from the turbine system, they can do damage that lasts for several months for years even that could plunge parts of Iran into darkness at least for the time being while at the same time not showing a direct trace towards Israel which allows both sides to end it after that if they so wish. Obviously Iran would know where that cyber attack comes from but it's it's a clear difference whether you find cruise missiles with the Star of David on it figuratively or whether it just came out of the width of the internet without a direct connection. So this seems to be be the most likely result that we should to, should expect soon that Israel will likely do a cyber attack and not a strike but as of now at least there um, all options are on the table so um, that Israel will not react at all seems extremely unlikely the a light kinetic strike would be in Syria likely in Syria against a um, IRGC target 
there's the option that they actually strike Iran and then likely not just missile factories, cruise missile factories that are being used to produce the goods that attack them, but also the nuclear plant, the nuclear, not the nuclear plant, the nuclear installations that are working on the Iranian bombs or likely on the Iranian bombs. But as said, the most likely result will be a cyber attack, at least according to my estimates. Um, this, um, this whole attack was special because of its volume. And uh, at the same time, the Iranian side measured it in a size that the damage that will be done on the ground will likely not exceed a threshold where Israel and Iran have to enter a full hot scale war. Um, at the same time, obviously, it's far from certain that Israel will be able to keep defending against strike like, strikes like this, of which Iran should be capable of doing several more of these waves according to their stockpiles of weaponry, as it has used a lot of equipment to do that and it needed a lot of aid from allies which might also not be able to continue doing this once the missile arsenals are empty. One of the interesting facts here was that uh, Israel was actually using AIM-7 Sparrow, so a completely obsolete missiles, obviously against uh, slow-flying drones and against cruise missiles. It will still do the trick, but it shows that they do manage their inventory and that can be overstretched with a continued uh, wave with continued wave of attacks so both sides should be more or less interested to to mostly leave it at this so if we go back to the initial question will this lead to world war three it doesn't seem too likely at this very moment but that was already it from me for now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps with the algorithm algorithm leave a comment what do you think about the current situation and if you're new here i would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos this channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you if you like to support the channel you can do so by the means in the description thank you very much to everyone already supporting this channel and that's it from me for now thank you for watching and i'll be back